So last week, Captain Clay Higgins, a sheriff deputy from a parish in the state of Louisiana, did a press conference announcing the arrest of 17 gang members uh, from a gang called the Gremlins. So let's take a quick look at this video and we'll talk about it in a minute. The Gremlin Street Gang is responsible for hundreds of violent crimes, murders, armed robberies, witness intimidation, burglaries, drug trafficking, extortion, and brutal beatings. We've arrested 10 of these thugs and have warrants on seven more. Every one of these animals is most definitely armed and dangerous. Darren Carter, Aaron Carter, Travis Cooper, Cody Guidry, Jaron Diggs, Kirkland Demache, and Jonathan Landry. We have felony warrants for your arrest. You will be hunted, you will be tracked, and if you raise your weapon to a man like me, we'll return fire with superior fire. Darren Carter, you think men like these are afraid of an uneducated 125 pound punk like you that's never won a fair fight in your life and holds your gun sideways? Young man, I'll meet you on solid ground anytime, anywhere, light or heavy. Makes no difference to me. You won't walk away. Look at you. Men like us, son, we do dumbbell presses with weights bigger than you. And the convicts in jail, most of those men are good people who just found themselves crossed with the law. They're not evil, and they don't respect you or any punk like you. They'll toss you around like a rag doll. I encourage every citizen watching this to look into your own heart and find the American courage that conquers all evil. I implore you to listen to this message and stand up. Take back your streets. Take back your country. Come forward with information about these heathens that have terrorized your community. And for those who would use this message as a way to create false racial division in our country, take a close look behind me. Standing next to every cop is a leader of our black community. This is not about race. It's about right versus wrong. One last message to the gremlins. You don't like the things I've told you tonight? I got one thing to say. I'm easy to find. On behalf of the St. Landry Parish Sheriff's Office, the Louisiana State Police, the U.S. Marshals, and every cop and law-abiding citizen from sea to shining sea, I'm Captain Clay Higgins asking every patriot to stand up, share this video, and send a clear message to the world. We're Americans. We'd rather die on our feet than live on our knees. One of the things that Higgins does in this video is he plays to America's fear. And he does a great job at playing to America's fear because he uses loaded language, coded language, to really get into the subconscious mind of the average American citizen. So for example, he calls these people animals. He calls them heathens. He said, we're gonna hunt you down. We're gonna trap you. And he also uses the term that, that they're terrorists. Uh, most law enforcement departments from small cities and counties, they look at the large cities to learn lessons. And Los Angeles is a great city to learn a lot of lessons from. Let me remind you people, 1965, riots. 1992, riots. And why? Because law enforcement during those times did a terrible job at interfacing with the community. And one of the things they did was sort of grandstand like Higgins did in this video. Chief William Parker in the 1950s used to call black people monkeys. In fact, he said the, the 65 riots started because a whole bunch of monkeys just started throwing rocks. And before you know it, we had a riot. That was the language. We actually heard that language with Chief Daryl Gates. We have a war, a shooting war, not in the Middle East right now. We have it on the streets of every major city in this country. And you know who's feeding and supporting the enemy? The casual drug user. That's who. That's who. And so I just believe that it's a time we got serious and we show exactly how we feel about these people who aid and support the enemy of the United States of America and the people of the United States of America, the kids of America. We're going to condemn those people who casually use drugs in this nation. And we're going to condemn them in the worst way. 
oftentimes talking about gang members. He used words similar to what Higgins did. And of course, 1992 blows up in his face and he has to resign. And let me remind everyone, Higgins actually had to resign. There's a saying amongst equestrians and cowboys, some horses just don't run with bit in their mouth. I'm one of those horses. I don't do well reined in. So although I love and respect my sheriff, I must resign. Because as a soldier, if I cannot conscientiously carry out my assigned orders, then I must resign my post. If it be God's will, I will wear your badge again. And it will shine. His bosses and his, the city officials in that parish, in that county, they know what can happen. They don't want to see their city on fire. They don't want to see the higher ranking officers standing in front of a camera with a 233 fully automatic weapon with a bulletproof vest trying to use fear and intimidation tactics to announce the arrest of gang members in a press conference. It's just absolutely ridiculous and unprofessional. And any of you people think that that's cool and that's OK, look at Los Angeles and look at what could happen when you create a wedge between law enforcement and the community. And that wedge is started from these press conferences, from this language that's used. Another thing that Captain Clay Higgins does, and I think that it's a, it's a great approach to try to get in front of it, but he says it's absolutely nothing to do with race. And one of the ways he's, he tries to successfully do that is he puts a bunch of black folks behind him to stand side by side with this agenda and then say it has nothing to do about race. But this actually has everything to do with race because when you look at the defendants and you look at the faces of these people he's talking about, we're talking about 90% of them are African American. 90% of them are people of color. And what Mr. Higgins is saying about them is ultimately not true. Four parishes, 32 cases, 98 charges. 12 agencies working to take them down for 18 months with one clear message. They're not going to tolerate the Gremlins gang. So what is he saying about the Gremlins? The first thing he says is that these guys are responsible for hundreds of violent crime. The Gremlin street gang is responsible for hundreds of violent crimes. Police say the gang is responsible for at least three murders, and police are looking to tie the Gremlins to other cases around Acadiana. As far as the seven still wanted, we still have tabs on them. We know what they're doing, and, and, and eventually we'll have them picked up. To go to jail for 50 years, think twice about what you're doing because this investigation is far from over with, and we're not going to stop until everybody is picked up. Now, we're going to take that at face value, right, as most American citizens. We're just going to assume that what these guys did uh, were, were the most violent crimes that a gang member can do, and we're going to assume that whatever the police say about them is absolutely true. We don't even know if all 17 of these guys are actually gang members. In fact, one of them is a female. So we got 16 males, one female, and the assumption is that they're all in a street gang. We know nothing about these 17 guys. Uh, let me remind you that in Los Angeles, Mayor Villaraigosa and Captain Charlie Beck grandstanded about the arrest of the people that were responsible for the Brian Stowe beating at Dodger Stadium. I never had any doubt. Uh, that the men and women of the LAP would work tirelessly uh, to find uh, this individual and all of the individuals uh, in this uh, matter. You can't say much I know about the case, but how confident are you that you guys have the right guy in this? Oh, I believe we have the right guy. I wouldn't be standing here in front of you. I certainly wouldn't be booking uh, him uh, later on tonight. Uh, you know, this is a case that needs much more work. Uh, you know, uh, but we have some significant, um, significant pieces to it that lead me to believe that, that we do indeed uh, have the right individual. And when they did that press conference, it was very easy for everyone to believe them. Why? Because they used that loaded and coded language. We arrested a gang member that's responsible for these atrocious beatings. And they ended up parading a, guy, a gang member named Giovanni Ramirez in front of the cameras for a few weeks, and then later we find out, had nothing to do with street gangs, had nothing to do with Giovanni Ramirez, and then of course the story just slowly goes away. So one of the things that I think is important is that these 17 defendants, um, they're entitled to due process, 
And what Captain Higgins is doing is basically convicting them all in front of the cameras, in front of the media, and he's doing it without anyone even challenging it. So let's actually go through what each of these defendants are charged with. And let's see if you think that this matches up to what Higgins says about hundreds of violent crimes and all the other terminology that he used. So of the 17 alleged Gremlins members that have been indicted, 12 of them are currently in custody. So two are actually facing serious charges. Roland Bernard, 23 years old of Abbeville, he's facing attempted murder and illegally carrying a weapon. And Andrew Granger, 21 years old of Abbeville, is also facing two attempted murder charges and possession of a firearm and aggravated damage to property, which is vandalism. But of the other 10 in custody, none of them are facing any violent offenses. Kavan Broussard, 19 years old, is facing 12 charges, and most of those charges are drug-related. He has also a... Uh, Two marijuana offenses, one cocaine offense, and two other drug offenses. He has an obstruction of justice offense, monetary instrument abuse charge, illegal possession of something stolen, and carrying a weapon. Gene Williams, 19 years old. Also, he's facing three charges. Actually, he's facing two drug charges, and then they added the gang enhancement. Wesley Lavoilette. 35 years old, he is facing six charges, and one, two, three of them are drug offenses, including a marijuana offense. Gregory Bessard is actually facing two charges, and they're both drug offenses. Xavier Dyson, 17 years old, is facing about eight charges. Most of them are drug-related, including a marijuana offense. He also has possession of a firearm, illegally carrying a weapon, illegal carrying a weapon, theft charge, and uh, two additional drug charges. Darren Carter, 18 years old of Abbeville, the teenager that Captain Higgins called out in the press conference, is facing about eight charges. None of them are murder. He has marijuana, 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 two other drug charges and a cocaine offense, one illegally carrying a weapon. Cody Guidry, 21 years old, of Abbeville, is facing three charges. Two of them are drug-related and a contempt of court charge. And Kirkland Demache, who is actually wanted, is facing two weapons violations. One is an illegal carrying of a weapon and the other is illegal use of weapon. And five of the alleged gremlin members are outstanding, but I'm almost certain none of them are facing murder charges because if they were, they would have put that front and center. And if you search on any of these five defendants' names, you are not going to find uh, they're facing anything other than some of the charges that we've already stated. So as you can see, a majority of these guys are not even charged with violent offenses unless you think possession of marijuana or possession of a controlled substance or possession of cocaine is a violent offense, which I don't think anyone believes. Yes, there are two guys out of these 17 that are charged with attempted murder. Two of the 17 that I was able to find. These youth are our future, and many of our future youth, uh, they go through troubling times. They go through challenges. Uh, Most of these youth are having problems with drugs. They're grappling with drug addiction. They have mental illness, and we're going to listen to this narrative that Higgins is presenting because it's easy. Let's call them a gang, let's give them a name, and let's get the community to rally behind them. That's fine, but this doesn't address all the social problems and issues that these individuals are facing. You know, Captain Higgins having all these black professionals and black people from the community standing behind them, I think it's, it's a little disappointing because... Those are the people that we should trust, those black leaders in the community. Those are the people that we should be able to go to. But to see them in a video standing behind Higgins with all this loaded and coded and racial talk is just a little unfortunate. When you play the fear card, it's easy to get the general public to accept that narrative. And we must challenge that narrative. 
We must challenge the hegemonic forces that shape this narrative and really get to the truth. And really, the, the issue here is not the Gremlins gang. The Gremlins gang is probably the most irrelevant issue in this whole situation. The issue is drugs in our community and young people resorting to violence to deal with anger issues. Uh, these young black teens aren't cultivating, aren't manufacturing, aren't transporting, aren't responsible for the drugs there, but they're the ones that are going to take the largest hit, the hardest hit on drug offenses, whether it's possessing them or getting involved in the underground economy and selling them for a profit. I mean, they're on the street corner selling drugs to other addicts. They're at the bottom of the rung when it comes to drug trafficking. But Higgins does a great job at convincing you, the public, that these people are responsible for it and they should be punished as such. The issue right now with, with mass incarceration is that we're sending too many people to prison for minor drug offenses, and that's exactly what a majority of these gremlins are being charged with. We need to be patient, let the criminal justice system take its course, and allow these guys due process. Because I guarantee you, most of these charges that these guys are facing, some of them are going to be dismissed, they're going to plead out to lesser offenses, and at the end of the day, when no one is looking, when no one's concerned about it, a year from now, when all of these cases have been adjudicated, it will not match what Higgins said about their, their, the level of violence that this group of guys are responsible for.